some terms that are really, really important to Darwin's theory of evolution, one of which is what we call natural selection. Uh, how I like to term this is nature selects. What happens is you have a selection pressure. Something that applies pressure, that pushes against something, an organism in this case, and requires it to change. Um, so what happens is a lot of times people say this is survival of the fittest, and that's pretty much true, a very, very simplistic form. Uh, so we have a pressure that is acting on an organism, and it wants it to change. And so that organism can adapt, or it can die out. Uh, and so a lot of times that is where natural selection comes in. Now, uh, natural selection depends on a few things. One, variation. Variation, this is differences in a population. They are the reason that you and I, we don't have the same hair color necessarily, we don't have the same height, we don't have the same facial features because there's a lot of variation in the human population. Um, and so we have variations. Now, the other thing that natural selection depends on is that some types of variation are favorable. Um, these things can be, variation can come from genetics in things like mutation or recombination. Now, both of these things are genetics related. Uh, as far as recombination, recombination occurs during uh, meiosis and fertilization. So it happens right away. So this happens with the gametes, which are the sex cells, the egg, and the sperm. Uh, it also happens in the creation of the gametes during meiosis. Uh, so this is meiosis here. Meiosis. And it also happens during fertilization. If you remember back to meiosis, you'll remember that one cell which has a diploid number of chromosomes will divide in two different sets of divisions and will have four different gametes that are created out of this. And these gametes have half the chromosome number so that when they get put together, you can have one with the full number or the diploid number. Fertilization is when those two gametes meet. And if you remember also, meiosis produces four cells, four that are very unique from each other. So that's really neat because no matter, depending on which of the gametes fertilizes the egg, for instance, which is another gamete, uh, it'll have, it'll result in a different offspring, which is so cool because there's so many possibilities. Um, mutation, something that goes wrong. You know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times they're harmless. Like if you have another finger or something along that line, it's harmless. It will not harm you. Sometimes they're beneficial. And in those cases, then they will hopefully allow the organism to survive longer so that they can pass on those traits. Um, and the mutation will carry on and perhaps even become uh, commonplace. Now, one more thing that's really, really, really important about natural selection is something we call gradualism. If something happens gradually, it happens slowly over time. And that is exactly what gradualism means. Evolution does not happen overnight. Uh, it happens slowly, slowly, over thousands and millions of years, especially if we are talking about complex organisms. We don't just change overnight. Okay, a few more terms here that you'll want to know. Uh, one being adaptation. An adaptation is something, a trait that helps you uh, survive, that helps you uh, survive long enough to reproduce in particular. And so an adaptation will um, be something in a result to a selection pressure. So with natural selection, you could have a pressure pushing on you and you change. Uh, one of the examples that we had in the video that we watched, the Evolve video, the squirrel, its selection pressure was the snake. The rattlesnake had this venom. 
And so it was able to, one of the, one of the squirrels or a couple of the squirrels had this gene that allowed it to withstand a strike of rattlesnake venom, which is very unusual because it can take down a full, full grown human. Um, but that adaptation allowed that squirrel to survive long enough to reproduce and pass on that gene. And so now we are seeing a lot of that in that population. More on that topic later. Uh, niche. A niche is a role that an organism plays in the environment. It's not just um, what it eats, but it also can be who eats it, um, what it does for the environment, because a lot of things do things for the environment that we don't necessarily consider or know about, uh, and so they interact. Uh, structures. Okay, we have two different types of structures. We have homologous structures and analogous structures. We also have what's called vestigial structures. Now vestigial structures are things that we do not use anymore, like the human tailbone. We have no use for it, it's left over, it's a remnant from development. So that is no longer needed. Homologous and analogous on the other hand. Homologous uh, is something that has similar ancestry, similar structure, but it does not have the same function. Structure, ancestry, not function. Analogous, on the other hand, is the opposite. It has the same function, but not the same ancestry. Example of homologous that I used when we did notes, uh, an arm of a human, a wing of a bat. Uh, they do not have the same function, but they do have similar bone structure, which leads scientists to believe that they are related way, way, way back. Uh, analogous, analogous has the same function, but not the same structure. So like a wing of an owl and the wing of a butterfly are analogous structures. So we also have divergent, convergent, and coevolution that we should probably discuss as well. Uh, coevolution is back to the squirrel and the rattlesnake. The rattlesnake would have this venom that was killing the squirrels. The squirrels, uh, some of them had that adaptation that allowed them to survive that full strike of venom. And so they all of a sudden they're all getting that because those are the ones that survive long enough to reproduce to pass that on. Then the rattlesnake, now if you remember at the end of the video, rattlesnake venom is getting stronger to co-evolve with this. So back and forth and back and forth until they reach um, some kind of an end. Then we have divergent and convergent. To diverge is to go opposite ways. You start out with one species and they evolve over time to become two different species, like we saw with the clippers. We had started out with one species on East Clip land, and then half of that species was separated, uh, and that species changed. So it can stay the same. Here's um, the first type of clippers, and they stayed the same because they stayed on the same type of island or the same side of the island. The other ones had to change or to adapt to this side or die. Uh, so they changed into a different, almost a whole different species. Uh, that's divergent. They change. They go away. They diverge. Convergent is to come together. So if you start out with two different species um, and they evolve similar traits or something along those lines, they converge. They come together. The other one that Darwin used was adaptive radiation, where you start out radiation. Uh, you start out with one species and that species develops into many different species all with different traits. Like Darwin's finches. Um, now the evidence that scientists use to do this, things like fossils. Uh, the fossil record is very huge. They look at fossils throughout the layers to tell them how they were related, how they changed over time. Um, usually they're found where water was. 
And also today, today we have bacteria. If you remember to the, the Felony Friday that we talked about, we talked about bacteria that was evolving, that was changing, that had developed resistance to antibiotics that we use so readily. Uh, and so bacteria, remember, are single-celled organisms, and so that one cell um, can develop and change. And so with that, we see evolution of Um, I hope this has helped. If you have any questions for me before the test, uh, you can tweet me. Uh, I will respond pretty quickly because I get it on my phone. Uh, you can also email, and I will try to check my email regularly tonight so that um, I can get any of your questions. Hope this has helped.